Hi guys, this is Gabriel Staples with Electric RC Aircraft Guy LLC. I'm here to talk to you briefly about the Computer Prankster USB keyboard and mouse prank device. So here's the uh, listing on Amazon. Go ahead and check it out, read the description, and read all you can about it if you want to know more about it. Uh, this is a little device that you plug in to a USB port on your computer and it will simulate a mouse or a keyboard. This is very confusing to people, so I'm going to go ahead and make this video to show exactly what it is and how to use it. So, the, uh, in order to find the information about it, first off, just go to Google and Google Computer Prankster. It's spelled like this right there. It ends in an A on each of those words. Computer Prankster. Um, when you Google it, you're going to go ahead and find the page on Amazon, and you're going to find the user manual page on my website right here. The user manual is going to help you out. So, take a look at the manual, and please purchase on Amazon if you like. This is my first product that I've ever made. I uh, am very excited about it. I've got plans for improving it in the future, but that takes time and money. So for now, this is what I've got. So to use it, all you do is you plug it into a USB port, preferably a USB 2.0 port. However, if all you have is USB 3.0 ports, feel free to try it. It might work. In some USB 3.0 ports, it does not work. If that's the case, plug it into a USB 2.0 hub and then plug the hub into your 3.0 port and it will work. I have not found a case where it will not work in a USB 2.0 hub no matter what the hub is plugged into, whether it's USB 3.0 or whatever. So 2.0 hub if you have only 3.0 ports. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. This is as the device comes when you buy it from Amazon. I opened up Notepad just to show uh, the fact that it does type. So this device, the way that it works is it simulates a keyboard and a mouse combination in your computer. That means when you plug it in your computer, it says, hey, computer, I'm a keyboard and I'm a mouse. I have pre-programmed movements and keystrokes into it in order to irritate people and, and prank them. So the concept is you're going to plug this device somewhere into someone's computer where they cannot see it. And you'll notice that the device is, you know, about the size of a nickel or so, and that's pretty obvious. It's got a light on it. Uh, you can feel free to tape, the, tape it with electrical tape to give it better protection and to cover that light. But it is pretty obvious. So... It works primarily on desktop computers in the back of them where nobody can see it or if you've got a laptop with ports on the back and they can't see them that works as well or if somebody uses a laptop frequently with a USB hub or a mouse or an extension of some sort then you could get a USB extension plug it in the side hang it off the back of the table somewhere uh, maybe stick a hub onto that extension and then plug this device into that that way it looks like it's just their normal equipment the point is though it needs to be in order to prank somebody, it needs to appear that nothing is different about their computer. Why use this device? The answer is because it requires no software whatsoever. Um, it, it, there's no software being installed on their computer. All it requires is this device, and it literally is just a hardware solution to do some, some neat pranking stuff. You notice that when I plugged it in, it took a few seconds to initialize. It might take up to 20 seconds for you. Uh, and it automatically starts dragging the mouse to the bottom left corner of the screen and it types random characters periodically. Those characters will only show up if you're inside some sort of editor. That's why I open up that editor. Notice, you know, if I'm here on this web page, nothing's showing up. So I open up the editor, uh, make sure it's selected, and it types those random characters. This is the default setting to drag the mouse and type those characters. This is all programmable, however. The default setting of the caps lock key as well. So let me explain this. Uh, a regular keyboard has the ability to detect the caps lock, num lock, and scroll lock states. That's just the way that drivers are implemented for keyboards. Therefore, the only three keys that this device can read from your computer are caps lock, num lock, and scroll lock. I've programmed the caps lock key in the device, again, the device detects the fact that you press caps lock, to uh, change the movement of the mouse. So if you press caps lock, it goes here now to what I call double cursor mode, and then you do it again, triple cursor, and let's go ahead and see what these modes are called. So I've just arbitrarily named these modes. I'm going to go ahead and keep on pressing caps lock to get back into a, um, uh, a stop state. Here we go. So I'm in a stop state. So if you go to the user manual, it's like, what are these modes called? Well, let's scroll down in the manual, look for the blue. You'll see here a nice uh, a quick reference diagram here. And we can also look at the keyboard states. So there's eight keyboard states numbered 0 through 7. Uh, randomly type a single random character, randomly type a random number of random characters, randomly type hello, etc., etc. Uh, you also have the timing modes to determine how often you want the keyboard to type. 
and you have the mouse move modes. The mouse move modes include things like a random mouse jump around, a random mouse buzz around, multi-cursor 2, blah, 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 blah. Let's look at those. So currently we're in the off mode right there. If I hit caps lock, it goes into random mouse jump around. Notice that it's just all over the place. If I hit it again, it goes to random mouse buzz around. That's it right there. It just kind of stays in the same spot. Notice that the mouse still works. I can still move the mouse as a user and click on things. I can highlight some text there, whatever. Mouse still works. These movements just go on top of the movements from the user. I press it again. It goes into mode three, drag mouse to lower left. That's the default when you first buy the device. Again, multi-cursor two, you can see two cursors. Multi-cursor three, and all it's doing is moving the cursor really, really quickly. And it looks even a little bit better in real life because you get a better persistence of vision effect from your actual eye versus recording here on the screen. Again, multi-cursor uh, four, multi-cursor five, circle, uh, mouse circle is what this is called right there on uh, number eight right there. Mouse square, mouse heart, this is a fun one mouse star and then back to off so if you want to open up paint just for fun here's MS paint go ahead and turn it on I'm gonna go ahead and start with uh, the mount buzz around and I'm just gonna click the button as I cycle through this there's the, uh, the the drag lower left press it again does the two th two cursors three cursors four cursors five cursors circle Ooh, let's draw some circles square heart, that's fun, and star, and then also the uh, jump around, and then back to buzz. So I'm going to go ahead and cycle through to just turn that off. Okay, it's back to off. So um, what now? Well, I want to show you how to reconfigure this device. So that's what it does when you first get it. You just plug it in. It's that simple. Make sure nobody can see it, and it's, it's done. Boom. It's going to move that mouse in funky ways that people don't like. It's a you know good little prank. It'll type when they're typing emails. It'll be really irritating. Um, but what if you want to reconfigure it? Again, there's 50 settings to reconfigure. So what you do is you check the user manual. And the user manual says uh, to enter and exit programming mode, you press scroll lock times five. So go ahead and open up a text editor like this. And I hit scroll lock five times. One, two, three, four, five. On my laptop, it requires holding down the function key and the scroll lock key is at the top right of the keyboard you're going to have to see whatever it is for your keyboard. Worst case, you just plug in an external keyboard that has the scroll lock key and it'll work. Um, at least on Windows. I haven't tested the other operating systems. So when you, when you hit the scroll lock key five times, it goes into programming mode. It says it right here. And it tells you what the current settings are. The current keyboard mode is two. So let's go ahead and check the user manual and scroll down. That means it's currently set to randomly type a random number of random characters. What if I wanted to randomly type hello? I'm going to change it to three. So to change it to three, I press the scroll lock key right there, scroll times one to change it. So I come back here into the editor and I press scroll lock one time and it just incremented there keyboard mode from two to three. Now I can exit. So I hit scroll lock five times to exit. One, two, three, four, five. It saves the settings. It tells you what the new settings are. And now it's going to go ahead and start typing. And there it is. It's typing hello because we're in mode three now right there. And the timing interval is still set to randomly every 0 to 10 seconds. If you wanted to change the timing interval, you'd hit scroll lock five times to go back into programming mode. And then you'd hit scroll lock twice and let it increment. When you're all done, hit scroll lock five times. So that's how this works. It's that simple. Use it. Check it out. Try changing these different modes. It's a lot of fun to, to mess with people. Whoops, it's jumping around because it's, it's typing as I'm doing this. That's kind of irritating. So it's working. It's irritating me. Um, look at the caps lock response modes. These modes are basically what is it going to do when you press caps lock. And you can configure this to do a whole ton of different things from just keeping caps lock on, which is really annoying, to even putting the computer to sleep when you press caps lock. So um, you've got all these settings to do. You've got your mouse or your keyboard time typing modes. What's it going to do on the keyboard? Your keyboard timing modes. How often is it going to do it? You've got your mouse move modes, which movement of those that we saw do you want it to do? Your mouse timing modes. It's set by default to do it continuously because it looks kind of cool and it's fun. But if you want to make it 
less obvious of what the shape is and just more irritating, you might move it to a, a larger interval, maybe every 30 to 60 seconds, tell it to do a mount, random mouse jump around, and it'll just twitch across the screen like this. Uh, that would be super annoying, but not so much that they couldn't use their computer. Caps lock response mode. Um, again, this is this will be uh, these events are what will happen when the user presses caps lock. And if you read these descriptions, you'll see that some of the modes it kind of makes them want to press caps lock. So, hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that makes a lot more sense now what this device is and how to use it. Uh, feel free to check it out, and you don't need Notepad to edit it or to uh, change the, the settings. I mean, you can use um, Microsoft Word or whatever. So I go, I'm, I just went and plugged the device back in. We're in Microsoft Word here, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit scroll lock five times just to show you. So if I hit scroll lock, let's wait till it, for it to start. Oh, it's doing it, I think. There it is. So scroll lock, one, two, three, four, five. Enters programming mode. And um, if I hit caps lock once, It'll change the mouse mode. If I hit caps lock twice, it changes the timing mode. If I hit scroll lock once, it changes the keyboard mo uh, mode. If I hit scroll lock twice, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You get the you get the point. To reset everything to default, I hit scroll lock ten times while in programming mode. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it reset the default. And now I can exit by hitting it five times. One, two, three, four, five. Oops. Oh, there it is. It just was up down, scrolled down at the bottom of the screen. So it's done. We're back into default settings. Again, thanks for watching.